Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the meeting will be held by Zoom video conference for participants. Viewers will be able to watch this meeting live on YouTube. The YouTube channel is the North Little Rock School District Board Meetings. And I, we're gonna start with virtual learning Fridays and I'll hand it off to Dr. McGee. But before uh, Dr. McGee gets started, uh, Ms. Temple, I just wanna jump in here uh, for one second. First of all, thank you for that. Uh, so tonight we're going to uh, present Dr. McGee uh, as well as uh, Dr. Reynolds are going to present on uh, virtual learning Fridays. If you remember, I think one of the last board meetings we had in November, it was uh, brought up. I think actually Dr. Reddis brought it up and uh, we thought it was a good idea to take a deep dive uh, actually into virtual learning Fridays. And I think uh, um, all of you as well as our community and our stakeholders will enjoy uh, learning more about Virtual Learning Fridays, what it is, what it isn't, and, uh, and some of the feedback that Dr. Reynolds and Dr. McGee, uh, as we continue to look at the model moving forward. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. McGee and uh, Dr. Reynolds. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kowalewski, Madam President and members of the board. Thank you for allowing uh, myself and Dr. Reynolds to come to present to you tonight. Uh, Brian, can I share, my, can you share, give me access to share my screen? So yes, sir. Uh, can everyone see the presentation? Okay, good. Thank you. So this is a update with virtual learning Fridays. If, as you recall, that board members, you recall that we had uh, created a reopening task force as part of the plan to reopen the schools. And uh, part of the responsibility of the task force is looking, making sure that uh, kind of update where we are with that plan and if we need to make modifications. So one of the modifications that we did make uh, prior to our new superintendent joining us was looking at adding a virtual learning Fridays. This is the only modification that we have made until we just made recently with the high school going virtual uh, remotely, excuse me, let me say it like remotely with the high school and COE. So with that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let me just, with that is the purpose of this is to provide an update to the board in our community regarding the virtual learning Fridays. Uh, remember our purpose also is to provide teachers additional support for planning lessons, collaboration, and utilizing the support plan to meet the needs. Also provide students with additional support in completing classroom assignments and or utilizing the support plan to meet the needs, as well as to develop and support digital learners throughout the district. So there are some non-negotiables in our plan and we're gonna talk about those non-negotiables. We're gonna talk about our structural delivery. We're gonna talk about our special feedback. And then Dr. Reynolds is gonna come and she's gonna present, excuse me, we're gonna talk about special services. Then Dr. Reynolds is gonna come back and present the feedback from our principals, uh, teachers, and parents. And we wanted to get student feedbacks. However, we just weren't able to get, they were kind of all over the place. We weren't able to get enough to get a clear understanding with that. So with that, the non-negotiables in our plan, we said that we started back in October 23rd, and tentatively, we're scheduled to end December the 18th. And I'm sure Dr. Paluski will come back after this and kind of share where we are with that. Remember, Google Classroom is our learning management system. It is a work day for both licensed and classified staff. Uh, the arrival and the dismissal times remain the same. We continue to provide breakfast as well as lunch on site and for our virtual as well as our on site student. Uh, we have a, a technology support that is available. And then remember, our buses will run as normal for those students who need to come on site. So, I, our instructional delivery uh, for on site students, they have the option to attend school. Uh, as normal, or they can work from an asynchronous at home. Uh, also remember we talked about no new content will be introduced on virtual learning Fridays. Students will have the opportunity to review or work on makeup assignments or work in a digital platform to on those missing standards that they missed out back in March when we got out early due to COVID-19. And then remember, this is also the flexibility in time, place, and pace for our students, for all of our students, as well as our teachers. So some of our, with our special services, teachers uh, in spe special education, dyslexia, as well as 
English language learners, they report to the building uh, and they are available and ready at the school to provide in-person learning as well as digital. Uh, remember, we're gonna continue using Google Classroom, but we use Google Meet to provide the intervention for the virtual students and the gifted and talented enrichment activity, activities are also available there as well as the therapists, the special education therapists, they are using Google Meet as well to make sure that they uh, provide that, uh, those services through their plan. Dr. Reynolds? Thank you. Um, so we were able to survey all of our secondary and elementary principals to get their feedback on the Virtual Learning Fridays. So the number of students average in attendance is anywhere from 50 to 150 students with more students attending on the elementary level versus the secondary level. 84% of the principals said that this virtual Friday benefits their teachers. 67% stated that it benefits their students. 67% said they would like to see virtual learning Fridays continue next semester. Uh, when getting their feedback, the kind of the major themes that were occurring as far as concerns were they were having trouble covering classes for those that did have students that were showing up on site. And another concern was that sometimes the students were not working, both the ones that showed up in the building and some of the ones that were at home on virtual Fridays were not completing the, the work that was assigned to them. As far as additional comments, uh, this is beneficial to teachers but some of them felt like it's not necessarily beneficial to our students. It has allowed them for more planning and catch up time, but there is a concern that the curriculum is, is uh, they're having to cover everything on a four day school week versus a five day school week. So that is an adjustment. As far as the teacher feedback, um, why they said they've been using their time on virtual Fridays is they're able to plan, they're able to grade and collaborate with their PLC groups and their teams that, that they work with. Their sit's great because students are able to catch up on missing assignments or they can meet with students one on one that need that extra assistance. And most of the teachers that uh, responded to me said they would like to see virtual Fridays continue. The concerns again kind of the same as the principals there's not enough time to cover the curriculum. Some they see students are not using their time effectively on virtual Friday, meaning they're not using that time to do makeup work or do any catch up work. And they're a little frustrated that they're not able to teach the new content. Beneficially, most of them overwhelmingly say they're not having to use their time on their own on the weekends to grade and plan. They're able to effectively meet with their, their team members to do that planning and get grading done. It gives them time to collaborate with their group and make plans as they're, they're together. And it's been a big relief for those teachers that are kind of having to play both roles and teach virtually and face to face. Dr. Sorry. Reynolds, let me, let me interject one thing before you go to the next slide. I can personally say that prior to going out, we visit virtual learning Fridays and we saw the teachers taking advantage of this with the collaboration, working and planning lessons. So I wanted the board to know that the teachers are doing an outstanding job taking advantage. They're just not sitting there. They're they're planning their lesson, they're collaborating, spending a lot of time looking at student data and, and planning their next steps. So I just wanted the board know that we did witness uh, and superintendent and uh, myself, we had planned to go back to start visiting Virtual Learning Friday, but we had both been out due to COVID. Uh, so, but we do feel that they are taking advantage of that and we're seeing that firsthand. I just wanted to add real quick there as, as, as Ms. Uh, as Dr. Reynolds uh, and uh, in fact, Ms. Williams and I are going to be visiting schools tomorrow, so we're going to we're going to be on site, um, you know, talking with teachers and, and viewing this as well. So I just wanted to let our folks know that. Dr. Reynolds. Sure. Uh, last part is a par uh, parental feedback. So uh, I did talk with parents from elementary and from secondary. And their feedback was this is great because it is allowing their students to kind of catch up on work that they may have missed. 67% uh, of the parents I spoke with say they do feel it's beneficial for students, while 33% said no, it was not beneficial. On the whole, most of the parents would like to see virtual learning Fridays continue next semester. 
A uh, little bit of the concerns is the attendance format, especially on the secondary level. Uh, they, they would like to see that process in certain buildings streamlined a little bit better. Uh, concern on kind of more the elementary level was they felt like it was, they were receiving busy work on Fridays because there's no new content allowed. And that was a little bit of a concern is that they're just doing some busy work on Fridays rather than it, it moving on with their education. As far as benefits to students, I heard a lot about that, especially par uh, one parent in particular said her child's mental health is much better now that they have that break on Fridays. Uh, another parent was talking about how there it's a little bit of a break from screen time, especially because her students were 100% virtual anyway. And so this Friday, kind of the, the format we put, uh, set aside helps them um, not be on the computer quite as much. They feel like it's a value because they know the teachers need that extra time in planning and, and our parents recognize that, that this is beneficial to help our teachers uh, in the planning. Several mentioned that not being at school on that one extra day for those that were face-to-face -face students reduced that exposure to other students, which is one less day that they're exposed to that a large amount of people at school. And they really enjoy that it's allowing their students to catch up on work. So if they're missing anything, they have that day to, you know, cre uh, to catch up on those works, meet with the teachers and get that extra help that, that some of them are needing. And then this link is the link to our, our, our plan that, that you all probably have seen. It's the link to our virtual learning Friday. It's our district plan of how we're conducting everything, which I think Dr. McGee has already gone over that format with you previously. And then um, just a thank you for supporting us. And then the last slide has all of my contact information, both my email and my office uh, telephone number. So if you have any questions or want more information or want some more detailed feedback about what, what we've presented, feel free at any time to contact me. And I'm happy to share any of that information with you. With that, uh, if we, we can entertain any questions for myself or Dr. Reynolds or even our superintendent. Yes, uh, Dr. McGee, I don't know who to refer this question to you, Dr. Reynolds, or to Dr. White, or to Laura Smith, but my question is uh, to Ms. Ratliff, uh, because I'm talking about staff development, what are we doing to support the new teachers, those that may be technology challenged? I'm sure there are some in every age group that are struggling with the different processes of learning the platform. Also, you know, when we hire new teachers, you know, and they've been there for two or three days, you know, because they're a millennium, it doesn't mean that they are technology sovereign. That's just stories people have told. And so before the school start, I guess, we had no choice in October, you understand that, Dr. McGee. We had no choice, we had to do what we had to do. But I guess when I'm asking Ms. Lett, what support and training are we doing for the levels of the middle school, high school, and the elementary? Are we hearing that a few, we are hearing that a few are still overwhelmed by all of this? And how are we going to support them to implement positive staff developments for them, I uh, guess, that's why I said, I don't know who the director is to, Ms. Ratliff, uh, because she's over staff development, or with whom am I speaking to? Answer this question, please. Well, let me let me see if I can answer that question. Ms. Williams, thank you for that question. That's a very good question, providing support to all of our teachers. Uh, we wanna make sure that we kind of do this in decency and in order. So therefore, when teachers like that, need that support, the first thing we want them to do is reach out to that building principal and that we utilize so that we can find out what teachers need the support. And once the principal is notified the appropriate directors, then as a district team, we provide that support to those individual teachers or group of teachers in, as needed. Uh, with regards to technology, uh, our technology department, along with Dr. Reynolds and Mr. Michael Holmes, does an outstanding job of working with teachers and getting them prepared and getting them caught up. Uh, with any support that they need once the request has been made. I am not aware of any teachers, uh, any principals that have reached out to me about concerns for teachers with regarding technology. I have not heard anything personally, and I don't know if the directors can say they have, but most of the principals that I've spoken with have not expressed any concerns with technology. Why? So I hope that answered your question, but that's the direction that we kind of want to go on is that 
We want the principals, uh, the teachers, and everybody to follow the chain of command by whatever concerns and supports that they need by starting at the building level first. And whatever the building levels need, then we will, as a district team, will come out and make sure we provide that support. Uh, Dr. Smith, or let me excuse Dr. White or Lori, do you, uh, Lori Smith, do you guys want to add anything to that regarding if you are hearing any of your teachers needing some support? Hi there. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. No, I have not heard um, of any teachers um, at this point. I think it was definitely a struggle at the beginning, um, but a lot of them have worked together. There's usually um, several very savvy um, uh, technology teachers um, in each school, and so they're doing a really good job of collaborating, but I would agree with Dr. McGee that if if you are hearing that there are teachers that are overwhelmed with the technology that they do need to reach out to their principal and we can certainly get them some help. Good evening, Dr. Poliski, Dr. McGee, members of the boards. Um, so I've not heard this complaint either. Um, we did an extensive blended learning plan um, this summer. And we have that plan, of course, it's, it's for public viewing. It's on the website. So we did roll out training uh, for teachers and also um, in each building, they have point of contacts. Um, so each building knows exactly who to go to to contact for their technology concerns. Um, in addition to that, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Reynolds visit those buildings frequently uh, in, in, in quest of that very thing. And that's to support teachers around technology. So I've not heard that complaint. And also, let me add, we also involve, uh, we created a technology support line. We have a help desk line online where teachers, parents, uh, students can call and get that support needed. That goes directly into Mr. Stagger's office. So his staff is there available to help them um, just about. And, and Mr. Staggers can give the, the number of support uh, contacts and calls, the data to show how many they have already addressed already since we implemented that technology support line. Brian, you wanna add about how many number of calls that y'all have service already? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon to uh, President Temple, members of the board, Dr. Paluski, Dr. McGee. We have taken somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1200 calls between uh, the start of school. And now, of course, the calls have tapered off quite a bit. Uh, at the very beginning of the school year, everyone was getting acclimated to digital learning and the digital learning uh, initiatives that were uh, released or that we had to adhere to. But uh, it has tapered off quite a bit. Well, we do have links on our website and we do have a help desk email that uh, receives uh, quite a few questions that we answer uh, routinely, weekly. Uh, I work with all of the media specialists in each of the schools to answer questions as well. So Dr. McGee is absolutely right. We, we do get those calls and we answer them uh, routinely. Thank you. Are there any other questions for myself or Dr. Reynolds? Yes, I do. If uh, Ms. Williams, were you finished? Uh, yes, I, I was through and I was glad that they said what they said because the teachers are I understand now that we, uh, Dr. Paluska has put protocol in place. If a teacher has a concern about the technology, go to the principal. And then in terms that principal facilitate this information to Mr. Staggers. But previously that had not been done, but now that it's in place, I don't think we should, we will not hear anything else about, you know, the inadequacies of what they cannot do. And so thank you, Dr. McGee for filling in Dr. Reynolds, thank you. Ms. Smith and Dr. White, thank you for answering my question. And I just wanted to add to that, Ms. Williams, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, if, if there's an issue, there's a concern, if, if our teachers are experiencing, you know, if there's, a, if there's a technology issue, if there's a curriculum issue, if there's not getting the support that you need, I just want to overemphasize, you know, please reach out to your principal, please reach out to, you know, through them, through, and then they'll, we'll get that information. We don't want our teachers frustrated and we want to make sure that our teachers get the resources and the, and the support that they need. The last thing I just want to add to that, and I, and I know I'm still, I got my new guide chips, but uh, I'm learning about MCLs uh, and this initiative, which is to support teachers. Uh, I still haven't seen it in action yet, uh, but I know that is another layer of support uh, for our teachers uh, to support them instructionally. 
So with that, I think it's uh, Dr. Redis had a question. A couple of questions. <laughs> the uh, first one is, um, I did see on the forum, the meet and greet that we had, and I thought it was a great question, which is, if there are snow days, how does virtual students, how are they affected? Do they get, do they sure. do, don't do virtual? <laughs> I, I, so uh, thanks for bringing that up, uh, uh, Dr. Redis. In fact, we were just working on this this morning. We were going through one of the things that I wanted to learn is what is our, our current process and procedures for inclement weather? Uh, so I was learning about that this morning. We need to have another follow-up meeting on that because we needed some, some other key executive staff members in on that. Uh, but with that is the follow-up to that because I want to know currently, it's my understanding within our school calendar, we have five built-in snow days. Uh, but the beauty about being virtual is, is it allows us that opportunity to continue instruction. I think that's, that's you know, outstanding. I want to talk to our, our principals. We're going to be sending something out very quickly about making that decision because I think parents need to know about it. Students need to know. Teachers need to know about it. You know, in the event that it's, it's snowing, it very well could be a work day. And uh, that just means we're going to get out a little earlier. Um, you know, on, on the other side. So I'll make that decision uh, shortly. I just want to get some more input. Uh, but I, I thought I agreed with you, Dr. Redis. That was a valid question somebody asked the other evening at our, our community uh, forum. My uh, other question is, did we get the fix before uh, it was a concern about new content being sent home and the misunderstanding about what to send home did we get that taken care of? And that, that has already been addressed, Dr. Redis. That is in our plan that we submitted that was approved by Arkansas Department of Ed, the Division of Elementary and Secondary ed Education. We cannot deviate from that plan because that's what we told them we were going to do. And in that plan, it says no new content will be introduced on virtual learning Fridays. Now, uh, as we continue as a team, a district office team, and and with the reopening task force team, we will look at modif once we make a decision, modify that, and we can modify that plan if we decide to continue with the virtual learning Fridays. But as we, as of right now, we cannot uh, deviate from what we advised the State Department that this is what how we wanted to remotely and modify our plan. Okay, and last two, um, how is it going with the swapping? You had students that were virtual and then they decided they want to go to school and then you had students that are going to school and they decided they wanted to go virtual. How is that going? Well, we're, we're working through those challenges as well. So, uh, but overall, we think that it's going very well. Uh, we, the ladies have done an outstanding job and I say our director's done an outstanding job of creating a waiting list and they work those requests off of that waiting list. Uh, we are in the process now preparing for a second semester, excuse me, uh, your second semester beginning in January the 5th. Uh, schools are working on their plan to receive those kids that want to return back face to face, as well as we're working on a plan for those kids that are face to face that want to go virtual. So we're working out on all of those details now. Uh, Dr. Paluski and myself were just meeting this morning about all of this. So we're going to be looking at giving some more guidance for how we're going to address our remaining virtual students, as well as providing that support to both all of us, to the schools for addressing those face-to-face -face kids coming back in the third quarter, as well as those kids that want to go from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual. Question. And, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Lastly. I'm sorry. Lastly was, um, do we have a timeline that we're looking at as far as making a decision as to whether or not to keep it for next semester? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, yes, so one of the things, one of the things that we're considering uh, is the potential of expanding or extending virtual learning Fridays through the month of January. Uh, but before we make that decision, I wanna make sure that our task force, we, we get some feedback from them. I still wanna talk to principals about it. Uh, but we want to make that decision prior to the winter break so that everyone knows. Uh, so I would say that last week, uh, Dr. Reddit, and it's a very good question for our public, uh, that, that you would know by the week of December 14th, somewhere in there, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that really leaves us next week 
um, to get this feedback internally, you know, to be able to make the decision. And, and with that feedback, and, and I love it being a curriculum guy too, you know, listening, you know, to teachers, you know, not being able to cover the content, I, I can certainly see where that could be a valid concern from a teacher as well as an administrator about, you know, being able to reteach standards. So uh, I think, and I'll be working with Dr. McGee, if we do make, if we do go forward and say, we're gonna go through the month of January, we, we may need to make some adjustments to our district plan uh, accordingly. So for an example, let's just say we were gonna extend through January and we were gonna allow the teaching of, of new content, then, then we'll certainly make sure that all of that's clear for our, our teachers, our parents and our students as well. I just wanna say thank you to the team. You're working really wonderfully. And thank you. They, they are the gate. in the more crowd. I have a question. Uh huh. Go ahead, Ms. Ms. Williams. Okay, would you tell us our enrollment, please, where, where we stand right now? Overall Mr. enrollment for the district? Yes, Mr. Stone can, uh, I, I don't know if he, Mr. Stone is a, uh, prepared to have those numbers, but that's something that we can definitely get back. If he's not prepared tonight, we can definitely get the information to the board uh, as soon as possible. And, and I don't and I don't have the numbers here with me tonight, and I, I'll I'll be happy to get those numbers for you. And uh, Mr. Stone, uh, I would like to know, you know, usually it's in the newspaper about our enrollment, but it's usually a blob. Uh, I certainly would like to see something like if you read Sunday's paper, something similar to that, uh, inviting our students, you know, when our enrollment is. School choice. It was a nice article if you saw Sunday's paper. And so we need something similar to that rather than a blob since we are knowing that students, we don't want to lose any students, but if we tell them when we're having our enrollment, it needs to be publicized and it needs to be done now before the semester. You know what I mean? It's just time. Madam President, I mean, excuse me, Madam Board Member, Ms. Williams, we are working on that. Dr. Paluski and myself, along with Mr. Stone, we're working to finalize that. And we're hopefully that we will have that information ready to go out. Uh, it is our intention. I was uh, maybe suggesting we're working on it to try to expedite that information, get out to our public. And so that they'll know that school choice. Uh, it was a very nice article this past Sunday. I read it. It was very nice, Ms. Williams. It is. And we want to do everything we can do to not only promote the good things that we're doing in the district, but also make sure that we can recruit our, recruit our students to return back mm -hmm. or potentially new students. Thank you. Uh, and I will just add to that, Ms. Williams, you know, we uh, actually met on this um, yesterday, I believe it was the day of, and I wanted to, before I was going to push anything forward, I want to make sure that I understood the process of school choice, teacher transfer, inter-district transfer, and make sure all of our process procedures and all of that are, are tight the way that they should be in order to, you know, to publicize. So we just met on that this week. Also, uh, we're planning in January to do a full presentation to the board on enrollment and enrollment trends. Uh, and also, and I'll, I'll grab Mr. Stone there. Mr. Stone, this is also another good example for our weekly board reports that our first weekly board report is going out tomorrow to the board. This is a good follow-up to add in your section uh, about those current enrollment numbers. I think it's a good way to keep the board informed of where our enrollment is. Yes, sir. We'll do. Thank you. All right, I've got, I've just got two questions. Uh, first, Dr. Reynolds or whoever might know this, how did the feedback regarding it being beneficial or not beneficial break between elementary and secondary? Was there a big difference uh, or did you even tabulate that information? I, I did. I think, I think the secondary are finding it more beneficial than the elementary. And so that when you, when you see those, the, the ones that are not as, as an agreement would be the elementary and the secondary are finding it more beneficial. If, if this okay. way it That's, that matches what I've kind of seen and heard. So I just, I was curious about that. And when you say does, would, does not beneficial, does that mean that they feel like this, they're being harmed or there's just not a net benefit. So when someone says it's not beneficial for my kid, are they saying that it's hurt their child or, or do you have that insight? I think the, the, the couple of folks that were saying that they don't feel like it's beneficial for their student. I just thought like they said, I don't know if it's hurting them, 
I just don't think they're learning new, the not learning new content is I think is where they're, what they're getting at is they're not, they're not benefiting from the day, but it's definitely not detrimental to their, their education. They're just not gaining anything from it. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Any, are there any other questions on the virtual learning Fridays for myself or Dr. Reynolds? I do. I have one. Um, I'm the student that I'm involved with is middle school. And they, were, they had a lot of assignments on that Friday. And in my mind, I thought that it was a day to catch up on anything from the week and stuff. So I was a little confused about the additional assignments. I realized it wasn't new content, but I was just curious as to what the thought process was with the additional assignments. Well, like we said in the presentation, Ms. Temple, thank you for that question. That's a very good question. Uh, the assignments are supposed to be for them they can review from previous weekly lessons or be able to catch up on some assignments that they may have been missing, or they can address the missing standards that remember we got back, we, we uh, unexpectedly got dismissed and ended school back in March of last year, and we missed a whole nine weeks of standards. They can use the digital platform to go back and address those standards that are missing uh, on a digital platform. Uh, that is something that we can make sure we can follow up and I work with Dr. White and uh, for the middle schools to make sure that we are adhering to uh, the expectation in the virtual learning prize, making sure that it is beneficial. That goes back to uh, Mr. Zakreski's uh, question to Dr. Reynolds. We want to make sure this time is beneficial to our students and that it's just not busy work, that they are actually taking advantage of that, that the learning, it continues. Uh, that they're getting a chance to be able to address those missing standards and needs, if that makes sense. I hope they answer your question. But we will address that, and I will work with Dr. White to address the middle school. And that's something I can follow up in our weekly, uh, next weekly board meeting. To you. Okay. Well, I do understand the intent, but I guess my thought is if I'm behind on something and I have new assignments, you know, that's all. I was just... I, just making a Remember, it, it shouldn't be any new assignments, but if they're behind, uh, teachers have the, uh, they have the flexibility to use a digital platform to go back and address those standards that they may assign assignment that the standards that they missed previously to see if they can master those assignments on a digital platform. Okay. And then, and uh, some of those platforms briefly that we have is Eureka uh, uh, Ingenuity. Uh, Apex, and I think that, uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember what elementary is using, but those are just some of the digital platforms that we have available, uh, linking learning that will address those missing standards. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. Thank you for all the work being done, Miss. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I, I, I think we're ready to go on to the... Um, Best purchase? Yep. So we, uh, thank you for that, uh, Madam President, Ms. Temple. Uh, so up next is going to be our annual bus transportation uh, report or purchase. Uh, and I'm going to turn that over to uh, Mr. Stone and uh, soon to be Dr. Tyler. Again, uh, good evening, uh, President Temple, uh, board members, uh, Dr. Paluski, Dr. McGee. Uh, tonight, uh, as, as Dr. Paluski indicated, we're, we're going to present to you a proposal for bus pur purchase, purchase for our annual uh, bus purchases for the 2021 school year. Mr. Tyler is here and, and will present this information at this time. Unmute for us, please. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Good evening. Good evening to the board, uh, President uh, Temple and, and board members, certainly to uh, Dr. Paluski and, and all that are on the line and those visiting. It's a pleasure to be before you on this afternoon or this evening to present our annual board transportation proposal. Uh, do want to uh, thank Mr. Stone for that introduction and for his leadership and, and his support uh, with our department. Um, as we look at our report. Can, can we start? I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Tyler. 
what we can see up on our screens are the contact and questions, your last slide. Okay. Can, can you start with the first slide, please? Okay, let's see. Are you able to see that now? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is that visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, once again, thank you all for this opportunity to come before you uh, to present our board uh, bus transportation uh, proposal. Our purpose is to purchase safe and dependable transportation for our students. Um, that's the purpose of why we're here. And the rationale for the purchases uh, before 2018, 2019, which was before my tenure, the district was purchasing only two new buses per year. And the system had at that time uh, within our district, we had like 90 buses with the majority of those buses being over 20 years old. Currently uh, through you know, board uh, approvals. We uh, got rid of some of that old, uh, some of the old transportation and the buses that we had. So we could have a dependable um, transportation on the road. We currently have 69 buses. And at a rate of purchasing four to five a year, we can replenish our fleet with dependable uh, buses every 14 to 17 years uh, versus every 35 years, that's what it was before uh, I came, before 2018, 2019. So we currently have an annual budget of $470,000 for bus and safety equipment purchase. So uh, as we conclude, this is a summary of what we're requesting. Uh, Summit bus sales, this is the pricing of what we're talking about. Uh, we're looking at purchasing 177 passenger trip bus with luggage, boxes, and AC, and that is 98500 And this would join our charter fleet. So when you, when you look at that, we're talking about, we try to put our bus buses, our best buses on the road, taking the longer trips uh, to represent our district. I know one thing I always am impressed with, even prior to getting in this position, when I see a school with the best bus, it kind of is a reflection of the district when I see their school bus. So we always try to put our best out there, especially when we're taking athletic trips, because it is it is like a marketing piece uh, also for our district. So we always want to get one to to uh, send with our at least one to send uh, for our athletic trips and other events. Then we're asking for two uh, 77 passenger route buses with AC as well. Uh, these can also be used for our charter events as well. Uh, we like to put our best out on the road the furthest, and then we rotate those that we had back into our fleet as route buses. And then uh, we thought it's necessary this year to also get one for our special need buses, uh, because lately we've been just getting uh, route buses or athletic buses that would go into our route system, but we hadn't address the need to replace our special need buses. So we thought it would be necessary also to get one of those. So the prices you see to the right are the reflection of what those cost, uh, 985, 193, uh, that's covering two of those buses. And then the 92 is covering the 148 passenger. That's a sum, uh, subtotal of 383.5. Now what, if you notice the previous slide said four to five buses, now we, we talked about getting five every year with the option of getting four and letting the fifth be uh, to get state-of-the-art type of safety equipment to put in our buses. So again, this year, we're gonna only get four and use the fifth bus uh, amount to get the necessary equipment that we need that our buses will be the best and the safest possible for our students. So with that being said, what we've done, we uh, asked for, the cameras now, uh, all buses with this would have at least four cameras, one camera facing the road so we can actually see that bus moving down the road to see what the drivers will see. And then three on the inside of the bus where we can see front uh, where the driver is sitting. 
uh, middle and back. So if anything is going on on the buses, we can see it. Uh, these are state-of-the-art cameras where we can actually see down in the seats versus what we had previously. Uh, we've had this system for a year and we're very pleased with uh, the way the cameras look. Also, we have GPS that's included in this uh, price where I actually right now from my desk can look in any, side, any bus that we would like to look in and see what's going on in that bus in real time. Uh, if you look at the prices, uh, one is for the camera surveillance equipment for the buses, which is a total of 67,409.30. And then the installation of the equipment is 4,675.65. Subtotal is what you see, 72,084.95. Uh, when you look at our annual budget of $470,000, and then we do the grand total of what uh, those two subtotals are at the top, you'll get 455,584.95. When you do the deduction, we're also still saving in the, uh, within our budget and also saving $14,415.05. So um, this is our proposal and I'm open for any questions. Here's my contact information. Once again, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to present and show you uh, what we're needing in our department. I've got a I've just got a quick question. Yes, this is JT. Um, it is out, is outfitting only one of the buses for uh, travel sufficient uh, since we want to have our best buses available to be in our charter fleet. Do do we need to outfit more than one, or is is that going to meet our needs? Uh, good question. Uh, actually, uh, like I was saying, the what we'll probably do, and I'll go back to those uh, buses again. What we'll probably do, this has been our trend, those three, that one and two uh, buses that you see, all of these will become our athletic buses. These will be the ones that we would send okay. out. Uh, okay. Last year, we were able to get four as well, and they're still in good condition. They're only one year old. So if we uh, have to go more than four or five, then we have those as well. But these will be our primary buses that we send out on those trips. Okay, so we don't need to purchase the the luggage boxes for those. The, right, those right. That suffice. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Oh, good question. I have, uh, Mr. Taylor. Yes, ma'am. When ma you gave us the, the vehicle options items on the specs, were these from different buses? Uh, would you explain these sheets, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. That that is for uh, the first six sheets that you you are seeing. Uh, and let me convert over. To that, uh -huh. give me a moment. Okay, page 19. Okay, give me one moment. Okay, all, all of this, if you are you all able to see the screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the first six sheets are like short forms of what the specs are for the buses, it's kind of line items. Okay. So these first two sheets are, if you'll see, you have 78 passenger here over type C, 78 passengers, and you okay. have the 80,340, that's the base price. All of this extra things are the details of what's in each bus, okay? okay. Uh, and then we get to the back and uh, it, it adds all of that up. Okay. And then you have the 98.5, and this is the one with the luggage box. So that's the, the, the one with, that we included, the luggage. So this is a summary, and th this is the second one, where this is the 76. And when you add all these other items up, you'll get the 96.5. So this is the other 77 passenger um, without the, the luggage compartment. Okay. Then, then the next two, you have the 76836. This is our 48 passenger, and it has all the, the bells and whistles here added. And at the bottom of that, you get the 92. Okay. okay. All right. Now, following that, all of these other pages are the long version and long, long descriptions of those first six summary sheets of the buses. So anything that you want to know about the dimensions and the, the, the dependability, the strength, 
um, you know, just mechanical type stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's for your pleasure and for your, you know, your looking. And I'll be glad to answer any question that's on here. But I just wanted to include that because I thought you would need to see at least every it, where every penny is going and what it's about. So Good those job. are the Good job. Yeah. Mr. Taylor, one other question. You say you have $14,000 left. Yes, ma'am. Uh, could you all do something down there about some paint up or fix up for those? <laughs> it's pitiful down there. This will, I am, I am so happy that you continue to say that, and I continue to have conversations with uh, uh, those that um, are in, in power. And I'm so happy that my superintendent will be visiting on next week, and he would have an opportunity not only to ride a bus with us and to hopefully meet some of the staff. <laughs> but he will try to paint up or fix up or something, <laughs> get, getting all of these buses and things. But yeah. If you go down there and look at that, it just really doesn't represent our district at all. I, I, I am in agreement with you, Ms. Williams, and I have told uh, uh, Dr. Paluski, and he has heard me, and uh, he's been compelled to come and see us. And so I'm, ex I'm so excited that he's coming, and, and I know that uh, he, he hears us right now, and he would do something about it. See, we got all these bells and put some buses and they you know where to park them or look nice. <laughs> Uh, I want one other question, uh, Mr. Taylor. I know you had said that you had sold buses in order to have monies in your budget to pay. Uh, were these funds, that was that budget. Now, what about the fundings that your funds that you have that when you sold the other buses two or three months ago when you came to us to say that you well, could get more money, like if you carried it to Tidham? Rather than take them to Tenenbaum, you know, I'm just saying that, to a scrap place, you could outright sell them and get a better profit. Now, what's on? What's the deal on that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for asking that question. Now, uh, as a reminder, on last year, what we did, we did say that, and what we did, we took the, the, the money generated from that, and we redid our whole parking lot because we were buying new buses, but they were coming in a lot full of potholes. So we addressed the need uh, first to uh, redo our parking lot so that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, this year, uh, the money that you're speaking of, I have it, we have it on hold in, in a particular treasure for to improve this building. So uh, whenever uh, Dr. Polisky comes over and uh, I will tell him the funds we have on hand to, to help out and support whatever we can do. I just believe that if I'm asking for something, we, I wanna be able to say, hey, here, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to help out, and, and, and this is what we have to put toward it. So uh, you're right on target, Ms. Williams. As soon as we have that meeting, um, I would be glad. You'll be the first person. Uh, I hope Dr. Pelusi called to say, come over and see uh, what a wonderful job we're doing over here in beautifying, beautifying our facilities. So thank you for that, and thank and you for that for continuing to do this because I, I, I love your support on that. I really do. Hey, and thank you for an excellent report. Mr. Taylor. Thank you. I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, first I wanna say uh, congratulations on your achievement. It is a great achievement. I'm seven months in and I still have to get used to when somebody says that it is because <laughs> it doesn't seem real. So congratulations in advance. Thank you. Um, Mine isn't on the sale. Thank you for the great report. So I don't have any questions about the report. Yes, ma'am. Just if you could just update us on, because back in August, we were all concerned about how it was going to go with COVID and the students wearing their mask and the temperature checked and picking up on time and how, how is it going? Uh, thank you for asking that, and thank you for recognizing uh, my achievement and congratulations on yours as well. Um, I want to thank Dr. Poluski for his leadership. What he has done, he's asked us to do that weekly report that he's already alluded to, and I thought it necessary to kind of let you all know the status of where we are, because uh, as you all know, there's no mandate of uh, social distancing nor a number set on the bus that we have to have. So we can put as many as we did last year without um, you know, violating any rules. And so it has always been a concern. So every day 
Uh, I get the numbers. My campus supervisor gets the numbers of every bus of what we're transporting because that is a concern. Matter of fact, we have uh, today 11 uh, staff members out, 10, 10 drivers, 10 of those are drivers. And if the one numbers were not so low, we wouldn't be able to still maximize our resources and get, get students to school on time. So uh, everything is going pretty well. Uh, we are monitoring that every day. And in my report on the weekly, uh, you will be getting those numbers every single week. And it's, it's going quite well. And we, we've been trying to keep keep the social distance. We are, we got some kids that don't like the word in mass, so that's always an issue. Uh, but I think that's everywhere. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're doing an outstanding job. All right, thank you. And congratulations again. Thank you. I have another question to Miss Lee Ann Anderson Alexander. And to you, Dr. Taylor, how have you all been able to work together as far as uh, getting those special needs kids to their schools? You know, understand what Dr. Beluska now has put a process and you're supposed to go to the person first, the principal need to follow protocol too about those buses. But I have to, just to verify Mr. Taylor, not to not trust in you, but they always tell us trust and verify. Yes, so Ms. Lynn, how have the buses been going uh, with the department since school has started? You know, I know there are some issues, you know, with buses. So would you tell me how that's been working? Actually, it's been going great. Um, and Dr. Tyler had me come and do a PD for his bus drivers on special ed when school started. So I got to meet with all the drivers. Um, and then just recently, the drivers all asked for copies of the students' IEPs. So we did a summary page, brought them over to Mr. Tyler. So each bus driver now has a folder and they keep it locked on the bus so they know if a student has seizures or autism or those things on their bus, which has been really beneficial to help them get um, the students to school on time because they know the students they're dealing with and the behavior problems or things that go along with their disability. So um, I feel like every time I talk to Mr. Tyler every day and when he calls me, I joke and say, oh gosh, what's wrong? You've called me today. Is there a problem on the bus? But we've really had a very, very smooth um, year this year with, with transporting our special needs kids and have worked really closely with the transportation department. That's very good. I am impressed because I didn't know that they were doing that. Another question, Mr. Tyler, when you talk to Dr. Paluski, we had some concerns about buses going into Boom Park, uh, down in Boom Park because of transportation, that some of the kids, uh, we never did settle that before the pandemic came in. And so you do recall what I'm talking about, correct? Yes, ma'am. I think we were talking about the need of uh, Boone Park. I think Dr. Redis was, that was her passion. Uh, that was something that she was really driving home last year. And I think we resolved that issue. Uh, we created some stops uh, within uh, a radius. And we so Boone Park has a special alliance that we do for them to make sure that we get those children to, to school. So that has been addressed. Okay. And we've been working uh, well with Boone Park and that's it's always dear to my heart anyway, because that, that's where I started in this district. So, well, I'm not partial by any means, but I'm gonna make Thank sure you. we take care of Boone Park uh, as well you. as all our schools. All for all, how many schools we have, 13, 14? Yes, ma'am. How many? We have nine elementary. <laughs> <laughs> we have one middle school, we have a high school, a COE within the high school, and we have the academy that we serve with transportation. Well, I just wanted to say, as a board, we're responsible for all schools. And as you direct of transportation, uh, we're responsible for all schools, okay? And yes, thank you for a marvelous- You, you heard me correct that quickly. I love all my schools and they can tell you that. But I also want to say this very quickly, that it's a joy working with Leanne and we do have a great uh, working relationship. It's, it's, it's re we really enjoy uh, supporting one another. So. Um, Thank you for highlighting her tonight. And it, it is a pleasure to serve her and um, her needs. I have a quick question. Um, this is Angela. I wanted to know, like, as far as when you purchase new buses, what's usually the usual tenure for keeping each bus or what's usually the cycle of life, you know, per bus? Or what's the goal? 
Well, uh, we, we would like to do what we're doing. We would like to replenish within the 13 to 15 years. That's, that's why we changed it. Um, we, we want the best buses. We don't want uh, to be costing more to try to maintain the bus than it is to actually just you know go get a, a new bus. So I, I would like to answer that question to say 13 to 15 years is our target of keeping the bus on the road. Okay, and then usually with the older buses, it's like what you were saying earlier, you usually just kind of sell them off or what have you. Since I've been here, uh, ma'am, is um, I think it's it's to our benefit to do the savaging that we do. We actually get way more uh, than we would to to try to just sell them or, or do an auction because a lot of times you were literally giving buses away uh, at the auction, but as we salvage, they go for a, a lot more. And that, that has been serving us well for the past couple of years. Okay, thank you. And I agree with uh, Ms. Williams. This is a good report. It's very detailed. Uh, thank you very kindly. Mr. Tom, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to follow up on that. Maybe this would be good for the public. Can you give us an idea of what the what is the kind of average when we take it to salvage, how much how much money are we talking about that we would that we would get back? It fluctuates uh, between five to seven cents uh, per per pound, and you know you know you weigh the bus, and and it's whatever it is times where it is at that moment on any given day. It will fluctuate between five to seven or eight cents per pound. And that's kind of how they calculate it. So uh, you're looking at an average, depending on the size of a bus. It could be somewhere like. Um, um, 2,000 or so per bus, 2,500, 3,000 or so. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I have one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the passenger bus, did you said it was a 48 passenger bus? Uh, we have, all of them are, can be, all of them are passenger buses, uh, by the way, but the, the smaller one is 48, and it's because the, our special need buses are typically smaller because we don't need that much size, but all of them are, are, are passenger buses. Okay, all right, thank you. Very good report. And I'm, I'm sure Boone Park misses you. <laughs> They're gonna want you to come back after you get that doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Okay, any other questions? Dr. Plasky, is there anything else that we need to go over tonight? Uh, no, ma'am. I just wanted to thank uh, our presenters uh, for doing an outstanding job tonight. And I uh, also want to thank all of our executive team members for, for being here to support our team and, and help out to answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, so I appreciate that. And thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank I do you. have one more thing. I do have one more thing. You just can't hide that charging wildcat pride. <laughs> I mean, we have a we have a big football game on uh, on Saturday, a big community event. So uh, I know everyone is excited about it. So uh, and I'm equally excited. The other thing I just wanted to mention uh, is uh, we've had uh, four uh, virtual meet and greets, and and I want to thank the board members publicly for attending those those that could. And uh, I think those are going really well, and it's given me a really good opportunity to get to know each individual school community. And the questions have been great from each of those communities. So I just want to, you know, do a commercial. We're coming to you next week. We have four next week and, uh, and then the following week. So we'll try to get everybody in. I know we've had to reschedule due to myself getting COVID. So we're, we're coming to your school community shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Well, if there's nothing else, I guess we are ready to adjourn. We just, just say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe. That's a move. We'll join. 628. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>